should 300 pound plus people be allowed to do mukbangs? Yes, I do think they should because I feel like if they weren't allowed to, then it's like discrimination is definitely getting in the mix. And a lot of people think that YouTube should take down morbidly obese mukbangers or morbidly obese people who eat on camera. But YouTube prides themselves in a lack of discrimination, like they try their hardest not to discriminate. If they were to do that, they would have a massive discrimination case on their hands because that's like saying only certain people can drink alcohol on camera or only certain people can smoke a cigarette on camera. Like, who cares? about the size on the scale you should still be allowed to eat on camera i have gone back and forth with this thought process 100 percent, but that's like where i'm at right now because a lot of people who do mukbangs who are super thin they eat way more than the mukbangers who are morbidly obese. Like, it's just not adding up. Like, you don't have to be big for it to be very apparent that the quantity you're eating, what you're eating, how you're eating, and all that, like, isn't healthy. Like, there's so many skinny mukbangers out there who will just eat so much. Like, several meals in one video, and it's crazy. crew and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what I eat to stay lean as a professional eater. I will see you guys in the most important room in my house, the kitchen. Hey, Katina, how do you maintain your physique while going out and eating crazy amounts of food, doing food challenges, restaurant challenges, etc.? And really, it all starts in the kitchen. So what I want to do with you guys with this video is sort of announce that I have created a playlist of all of my past how I eat to stay lean, full day of eating type videos. That way you guys can kind of see how similar each one is and that it's really not that complicated. But I want you to be able to find all these different examples in one easy to go to location. So so we're gonna go ahead and add this to the list of episodes that we have. And yeah, I hope you guys kind of just enjoy how simple this all is. So basically, as I dig into this delicious epic salad, what I have in front of me is about two and a quarter pounds of salad. It's rich in protein, really good macros. Basically, I'm eating this entire meal for roughly a thousand calories. And that's kind of one of the major tricks to uh, being able to stay lean is being able to also stay full and satisfied. So I've done a similar video just eating mega salads in the past, but I mean, I kind of stick to the same stuff a lot of the time. Although it doesn't have to taste bad. This to me is actually really enjoyable. Just a big pound and a half bag of lettuce, a can of mixed chili beans for the flavor, the fiber, the protein, and the carbohydrate, and a can of chicken for the protein, obviously. Now everything that's in the salad bowl right now, I think cost me less than $4 to make this massive salad that's gonna keep me full pretty much all day. Now typically what I'll do is eat this pretty much as fast as possible while also kind of chugging some of this here sparkling water. This is a Walmart special, it's one of my favorite things. It's a liter of sparkling water, it's super fizzy, fills up a lot of space. And then for dessert, I like to make myself some protein oatmeal, just cause I have a major, major sweet tooth, as you guys know. <laughs> so that way, 
after I eat this meal, I will feel satisfied. I won't be super food focused. And I've also kind of accomplished eating a large amount of food for a small amount of calories. It is currently right around lunchtime while I am eating this. And up until this point in the day, I've only had coffee with a little bit of protein powder mixed into it, just to keep me going through the morning. I am obsessed with coffee. I love caffeine. It is so delicious. You guys know I'm on team slurp. Gotta slurp that coffee. And yeah, it just, it keeps me full up. You have to have a good amount of self-control. Obviously I'm very hungry up until I eat lunch, but the coffee kind of distracts me throughout the day. It gives me a little bit of that fake pep in the step due to the caffeine in it. So today is actually weekend. Typically, uh, if I have class or something in the morning, then I'm super distracted until lunch comes around anyway. But this morning, I wanted to go out on a walk and film that little intro video for you guys. It's a beautiful fall day today, although very cold. I am not ready for it to be hoodie season, but you know, you can't win them all. So what I really want to emphasize here is um, the key to all of this, as I've already said, I think like three times in this video, the key to all of my success in keeping the weight off when I'm not doing a food challenge is managing my diet, having self-control, knowing what the power of calories in versus calories out is. And I've talked about this many times in the past. I am I'm taking basically a giant weekly average of all the calories I consume. So I know to maintain my weight, I need to eat roughly 18 to 20,000 calories per week to maintain my current body weight. So if I film a restaurant challenge or a food challenge here at home, that's say 7,000 calories, I know that throughout the rest of the week, I have 11,000 calories to play with, which isn't that much when you think about it, which is why my one big meal for the day is only coming in at about a thousand calories. Now, before bed, I'll tend to sometimes have like a protein shake that way I stay full and because I do go to the gym and work out I like to avoid muscle breakdown while I sleep so I'll make a giant casein shake right before bed and to kind of elaborate on that casein is a slower digesting protein basically it just allows you to stay nice and full throughout the evening slowly releasing protein into your muscles as you rest and sleep like a baby I think that one of the major problems with uh, how a lot of people view nutrition is that you have to really make it complicated, that you have to have like organic vegetables or like organic meat and stuff to be healthy. In reality, that's not necessarily true. I mean, like I said, this whole meal cost me about four bucks when you average it out. So that is really, really cheap and affordable. It is not expensive to eat healthy at all. And not to be too redundant again, there's nothing special about the workouts I do other than I'm consistent in following through with them. I don't do any crazy amounts of cardio. I go to the gym. I purposefully lift my weights maybe four to five days a week right now. And that's it. I'm pretty active throughout the day just because I have to walk to classes, etc. I enjoy going for walks outside, but I don't do anything any crazier than going for regular walks outside for cardio. Every now and then I'll get a wild hair and decide that I want to go like spin on a stationary bike really hard or I'll take my bike out that I've been neglecting for so long <laughs> out for a ride, but that's it. That is really, really it. It's all, <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough about nutrition. So what comes into your body on a regular basis.